What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today we're going to be talking about an iced tea called Palm Diggity and the Twisby Diamond 580 All. So the iced tea that I had today actually I had made in store for me. It is called Palm Diggity and it was so good. <laughs> Super good. Way better than I was expecting. Um, it's definitely a little bit sweet even though I put no sweeteners in it whatsoever. Uh, the main tasting notes uh, were pomegranate juice, um, hibiscus, and a little bit of lemon. Um, primarily pomegranate, um, but despite that, the hibiscus and the slight lemon um, actually made it a little bit sweet. Um, but that's probably also because there is stevia mixed in with the blend. Um, so it's kind of like an artificial sweetener that's supposedly natural, but... Who really knows? <laughs> um, very low caffeine, despite the fact that it's a black tea, um, which I enjoy. And black tea is generally where, um, like, my preferences go towards anyways. Um, so I really appreciated that. Um, as an iced tea, you steep it longer than you normally would if you drink it hot. Um, you're going to want to steep it from about five to seven minutes. You only use about half the amount of water, but you use more tea leaves. So essentially you're making a really concentrated version um, when you make iced tea because when you pour it over ice to get it cold, um, that ice will dilute your tea a little bit. So that's why you really want to make it like concentrated um, and then therefore steep it longer. Um, but it was really good. I will be buying um, some, the actual mixture so that I can make it at home. Because um, like I said, I have them make it for me in store. So I would definitely recommend it if you are looking for some awesome iced teas this summer. And with that today, I decided to talk about the Diamond, or Twisby, <laughs> Twisby Diamond 580 at all, the aluminum version. Um, there is a version out right now. This specific specifically is the orange one that came out like a year ago, a little over a year ago. There is one out right now called Lava, which essentially is the exact same color. Um, from the pictures I've seen, it looks identical. From reviews that I've seen, it may be slightly darker orange, but basically it's the same thing. <laughs> so if you really dig the color, um, you should be able to still get uh, one right now. The reason why I mention that is because they've been coming out over the last like year, two years, um, with different colors. So they've got like blues, greens, purples, reds, um, all that kind of stuff, and they are limited edition. Um, but silver, I think there's a black one, maybe one other one, but definitely the, the silver color instead of the actual color that it's here. Um, is available all year round, so you can still get them. And there are um, Twisby Diamond 580s that aren't the all version. Um, all essentially just means that it's aluminum. So the connecting pieces or all the color pieces are made of aluminum rather than plastic. Um, apparently they had problems f like several years ago with the plastic cracking. Um, supposedly that is fixed now, but that's also why they have the all version. Um, I really like the build of this pen. It is a solidly built pen. It feels very solid. Um, and obviously, you can see here, it is a piston filler. Um, so you do have quite a large ink capacity. Um, I generally don't worry about ink capacity, to be honest, because normally it takes me forever to go through something this size. Um, to me, a converter that's a milliliter, even a little bit less, it's all I need uh, because I change my inks so frequently. Um, but for those of you that don't change your inks like all the time um, or like to travel or take lots of ink with you, um, piston fills may be something that you want to go to. Um, and this one is a good one to do because you can completely take it apart. So where's my wrench? Twisby sends you this little wrench here, a little vial of silicone grease um, so that you can completely remove uh, all the parts of this pen. And I've kind of done a breakdown just before I filled it up for you so that you can see just kind of quickly how I do it. Um, what that allows you to do is completely clean out every aspect of this pen, which is really awesome because then you never have to worry about what kind of ink you want to put in here. 
um, and it also allows you to re-grease the piston once it starts to get a little bit stiff. Um, and I really like the fact that they include everything that you're going to need to do that. And they not only include everything you need, but they still make it at a very affordable price for a piston filler. Piston fillers usually are, um, I don't want to say top tier, but usually requires you to make a fairly significant jump in price. Um, by the time you get into a piston fill, you're usually looking at like a Pelican or a Mont Blanc um, or something with a much higher price tag. These babies, US prices are about 60 bucks. That's pretty dang good. Um, Canadian prices, you're looking around 80. Um, so a little bit more, uh, but uh, if you do a little bit of sleuthing, you can probably find some better deals. But 60 bucks is not too shabby for something like this, in my opinion. Um, the clip, perfect. Uh, you know, it's springy, but still stiff enough where, you know, it's not going to fall off, you know, shirt pocket, where whatever you've got it in, pants pocket, anything like that. You can kind of post but not really um, it's not gonna fit completely and it's on the piston knob so you're gonna turn the piston and then that's gonna be a giant mess but I wouldn't recommend you do it anyways because it becomes extraordinarily back heavy um, and it's not really meant to post at all um, that said though it is perfectly balanced when it's not posted and it's meant to be used unposted so you're not supposed to really um, and the grip section to me is a perfect length um, the threads that are here are pretty inlaid so even if you hold it back like my thumb usually rests around the threads here but you're not really going to notice it um, because when the cap is put on they actually have a rubber o-ring here if anything, you're going to feel that before you'll feel the threads, um, but to me, no issue. You can actually buy multiple nib units, so you can unscrew this section here. Um, so that's really cool also. So if you buy a medium and you decide that you don't like it or you just want extras, um, you can buy all the nib units separately. So extra fine, fine, uh, medium, broad, 1.1, and I think... 1.3 but don't quote me on that one um, so that's really cool I have an extra fine uh, nib unit as well the one I currently have installed here is a medium um, the extra fine is far too fine for me but when I first bought the pen I was really into extra fines and fines um, there's no hard starts I've never had any skipping with them honestly it's a really good pen um, there's really only two things downsides or cons um, if you want to call it that, um, with this pen. And it's not even with this pen in general, it's pretty much within all the Twisbees that I've ever used. And I, other than the new um, uh, Twisby Vac Mini, I have all of them. So the problem I've, I've had with Twisbees is that nine times out of 10, the tines on the nibs are very tight. Um, and because they're very tight, the pen is dry. Um, I like fairly wet writers, um, so I usually have to work with every Twisby that I have to open up those tines and get the flow to be increased. So that bugs me a little bit. Um, and then of course you can't post it, but like I said, you don't need to. So other than the fact that I know that I have to put in some time to widen the tines or separate the tines a little bit, um, I absolutely would recommend this pen. Uh, I really dig it. And uh, there's really nothing negative that I can say about it other than that. So let's jump into the writing sample and I'll show you what it can do. So we've got ourselves a Twisby nib here. This is the medium one. Um, Noodler's Apache Sunset. Um, you know, looks pretty, pretty nice. I like watching it slosh around. Some people don't care, but I think it's pretty cool. Um, so this pen is pretty smooth. Um, you know, you're not 
you're gonna get a little bit of feedback. Like you're you're gonna feel a little teeny bit of drag, um, but it's definitely not anywhere near scratchy or anything like that. It's it's pretty smooth. Um, I have worked with this just a hair um, to get it to be a little bit more of a wet writer. Um, you know, especially because with inks like this that I really want to shine, I definitely want to see, um, you know, some, some shading, uh, which this ink is like known for. Um, they're pretty stiff nibs. Like I said, I've worked with this one slightly, so I can squeeze out a little bit more than what you will probably be able to when you first get it. Um, Twisby nibs in general tend to be on the stiffer side. Um, reverse, you can. It's definitely going to be a lot drier. So in an ink like this, um, you know, being orange kind of thing, you're not really going to get, you know, a whole lot. Um, that said though, it's pretty dang smooth, even reverse writing. So if that's something that you do often, um, this may be a cool thing for you. Um, quick writing. Definitely not really any issues. Um, I haven't ever actually had an issue with this nib being able to keep up, this nib and feed. Um, like I said, I've worked with it a little bit, so it is a little bit more wet. Um, but you can see, like, you know, the areas of heavy pool versus light. Um, even when I kind of take my time a little bit more and write a little bit slower, um, you can see some, some good shading. So I really like this nib now. Um, the medium, I would say, is on the f slightly finer side. Um, if you're used to Visconti or Pelican or, um, you know, the Edison pens, anything like that, this medium is going to be a little bit on the finer side. Um, so you may want to go with a broad, but either way, pretty solid in my opinion. Um, I would definitely recommend it, especially if you've never owned a Twisby pen before. Um, this is probably the one I would say to go with. So guys, that's enough for me today. Uh, if you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. If you really like the video and you haven't yet done so already, please hit that subscribe. I do make videos every Monday and Friday. And uh, as always, don't be afraid to leave any questions, comments, or concerns down in the comment section below. I read them all and I try my best to answer them as soon as I can. Awesome. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.